everybody. Welcome to Fab Fit Friday today and the final chapter of our uh, Tea Sew Along. I'm really excited because um, this class has inspired me to try a couple new things here. Um, the first thing is I want to apologize about my eyeball. I have like a sty or something brewing, so I apologize. I didn't put any makeup on because I didn't want to irritate my face. So I apologize for that. Sorry, you have to watch me like this. But I think it's going to be super fun sewing. Um, all right, so I have on my next version of my tea. And what I did here was I created a little cap sleeve. And you can see the cap sleeve is lined. So the edge is finished. And I'm really excited about it because I'm not a, um, a super lover of sleeves. But a little cap sleeve like this really, you know, it covers my shoulder. Um, and I think it's kind of a pretty look. So um, I'm going to show you how to make this lovely sleeve. Plus, I'm going to show you how to finish the neckline with a knit band. And you can see here, I raised my neckline up because I wanted to make a crew neck and I think it's just um, a little bit too high so I'm going to show you how to trim that off before we finish the neckline and then I'm going to do a hem but I'm not going to hem this dress because I've been wearing it all morning and I really like the swishiness of the hem without it being finished and the thing about it is it's actually also the perfect Oops, wait a minute. It's also the perfect um, height on me, so I don't want to make it any shorter. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you as much of this dress as I can. I actually lengthened it into a dress. Um, hi, Sally. Uh, Sally says, hi, Jen and everyone. Love all your new tees and tanks. Um, thank you, Sally. It's super exciting. I have practically a brand new wardrobe. I need to make a solid black skirt to go with all my prints now. Um, but I'm really, I'm loving this. Um, I can't wait to get to the raglan sleeve top next week. Um, Janie says, hi Jen, that cap sleeve is very pretty, thank you. Hi Mary, cute top. All right, so Mary, this one, I was inspired by you actually with your very close neckline. So I, I raised my neckline up um, and I'm going to have to trim it back a little bit to put a knit strip on there. But I just want to show you, um, I made this into a dress. And you can see, I mean, I can't show you the hem, but it's a, it's a long, long dress. And I love the way it fits. It's got a fit and flare thing going on. Um, very comfortable. And this is an ITY knit. And the ITY knit is really cool because it doesn't cling on to your shape it just sort of skims and it's very comfortable so this is actually a dress that is maxi length um, all right and I'm gonna, I'll give you some tips on lengthening your tee into a maxi length hi Kathy nice to see you all right so here's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna jump off camera for one second to take this dress off now so I can show you um, how to sew the sleeve that I have here and um, work the, on the neckline and such. So let me just take this off. I'm gonna put on a different top. I'll be right back. I'm back and I have on one my of my other tops this is not the same pattern but um, I'm really I want to show you something uh, on my hem here of this let me just show you something here okay so the T if you relax the fit of it it's gonna have some extra um, ease through the hip and when I lengthened the the T that I just had on a minute ago into 
a dress, I had to trim some of this fabric off. So I want to show you that and how to adjust the pattern if you'd like to do that. So let me just, um, let me show you that. Let me just fix my camera here. All right, so let me just check in here. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Um, hi, Suzanne. Uh, welcome, ladies. All right, I'm super excited about today because, like I said, I've been creating this whole new wardrobe for myself. <laughs> um, I bought this fabric because I thought I was going to make my daughter Anna a dress out of it, but she didn't love the floral print. So let me switch my view here. Okay, so this is the dress off my body. Um, and you can see, I think you can see it's got my center front, my side front pieces, and then the little lined cap sleeve. Let me turn it inside out so you can see um, what it looks like. So I think from this side you can see better because it's lined. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the inside. I'm going to show you how to adjust your... Um, I'm going to show you how to adjust your short sleeve to make this. Uh, Mary said, um, I cut my neckline down about an inch. All right, so and just I want to do truth and pa pattern fitting. The, the pattern adjustment I showed during FabFit Friday a couple weeks ago did not work to fix um, Mary's pattern or to fix those drag lines. What ended up fixing it is if she picks the shoulder up closer you know, picks it up so it's not hanging off her shoulder as far because it's a little bit loose across her shoulders. And if she brought that in, she told me that it did relax the drag lines, but then it made the armhole tight and into her, um, into her um, armpit. So let me address some things like that for Mary first, and then we'll get on to this pattern. So if, where's my side front piece? Okay, so this is the, the two pieces here, okay? And so, like, if we shorten the shoulder, it moves the armhole, you know, up onto, more onto her shoulder, and then it allows the fabric to hang better. That's what ended up fixing um, Mary's drag lines that she had. So basically, what she can do is she can shorten the shoulder and the way I would shorten the shoulder here let me do it on this all right so I'm gonna show you on here all right so this is the center this is the new center front I made and you can see that I I raised my neckline an inch and then Mary said Mary said that she cut her neckline down about an inch so I'm actually going to be trimming mine back down too so I'll get to that in a minute, but here, let's pretend this is Mary's center front piece. Oh, Mary said she didn't, it wasn't off the shoulder. She pulled, all right, so you shortened it like this, like you shortened it here and pulled it up. All right, so, and that's, all right, so that's perfect. Thank you for telling me, I misunderstood. Okay, so it wasn't off her shoulder, it just, it was too, the armhole is too long. That's what fixed it. So if you want to, if you want to bring up the fabric, um, my guess is then Mary, tell me if you think this is right. You needed to petite your armhole to shorten it here to drag the fabric up so the seam was a little bit higher on you. Then we can dig down and fix the armhole. So basically, if okay, so if this is too long here. What you're gonna do is, let me just get a ruler, somewhere below your neckline so you don't have to play with the actual neckline, draw across, okay, and let's say you wanted to take out however much that you needed to do that. Um, I don't know, let's do a half an inch. I don't know how much you, do you know how much you had to pull yours up? All right, we'll go with a half an inch. So Mary, whatever your actual measurement was, you're just gonna make a line here. Then you're gonna cut your pattern. And you're gonna raise it up and get rid of that, okay? 
So I'm just going to tape it back in place after shortening it here. And then, after you do that, you've now pulled the base of your armhole in up into your armpit because you've shortened you've shortened the fabric to raise the seam, but the base of the armhole is now um, going to be too short. So if you shorten this, you also have to shorten this. Okay, so Mary pulled out about three quarters of an inch. So you would do this three quarters of an inch, then you would cut across here and do the same thing. I'm not going to cut my personal pattern, but you'd cut here and shorten it the same amount here so that these pieces fit. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to lower your armhole down here so it's not up in your armhole. I mean up into your armpit. So I'll draw on here. So basically if you shortened it three quarters you can bring it back down a little bit like this. So just the base of the curve just bring it down like that and trim that off. Does that make sense Mary? Okay so um, that's how you can draw all that out the space between your seam and your armhole hole won't be very big. However, towards your side and underarm, you don't see that anyway. So just make sure when you scoop the base of your armhole, you scoop it, you know, just to lower it. Don't take out any over here across the width. And then, of course, if you do that to the front, you also have to do it to the back. So I would lay your pieces right next to each other and just sort of scoop out the back armhole as well like that. Okay, so that's how I think you can fix your pattern for the next time. Scoop the armhole approximately the amount that you shortened the front pieces. Okay, and it may be that you don't, you know, if, if you want to shorten the, the upper back piece, you can. Um, but if you need the length in the back, you can leave it. So basically, that's how you fix this and notice if you're adding some down here you're you're you still may need to fix your sleeve because by scooping here that doesn't really change the length of your total armhole that much all right mary says yes this does make sense but the very front seem to fit just like it is, I will get more fabric and try it this way. All right, so, um, all right, so if your front seam seemed to be, this part of your center front seam to be okay, you may be able to, I wonder if you can do it like a diagonal adjustment where you slash it and close it diagonally. I think I would do it like this. Do it like this because you're not getting any in trouble with um, creating any weird angles. But if if you need to, and like you said, if the front fit you the way you liked, then you could. Let me just get a piece of paper here. Hold on. Um, I just need a scrap. Hold on. Here. Okay, so, you know, after raising it, if you'd like to, you know, then gently add a little bit back in like this, you know, you can lengthen it back out like that down here. Okay, but I really think, you know, it's picking it up at the side and shortening the armhole. You know, then you can just add a little bit back down here if you think you need to. Um, but if raising it up fixed it, chances are, even though it looks like it fit okay across your front, you may need to shorten it all the way across like I showed. So let me know what happens with that. Um, all right, so that's just to put a you know, a finishing point on Mary's pattern because I didn't want to, you know, 
just pretend that adjustment I showed worked for her. Um, my thought process on closing that dart that I showed during FabFit Friday was to create more of a straight edge here because if your edge is straight here, the fabric may be more likely to hang straight as well. So that may work for somebody else, even though it didn't work for Mary. All right, so now what I'm going to do is show you my sleeve. And basically what I did is, let me put some paper here. Basically what I did to create, well actually maybe I should show you, hold on. All right, so here is the original sleeve. This is my original sleeve. Okay, and so to create the cap sleeve, here, let me show you what I did. Okay, so this, all these edges match up perfectly along the top. I did not change my cap. Okay, so here's what I did. First of all, I measured from my bottom edge up two inches. Okay, and I also came in a quarter on each side. And I shortened my side seam to, I mean my underarm seam, to an inch and a half. Okay, because I just wanted a little bit under the arm on that sleeve. Oh, Mary says I'm 5'4", so probably a little shorter than what the pattern was designed for. Yes, I do think, Mary, just take it all off across the whole front. I think it's just a, too long for you. Um, try that. Because if you picked it up and that worked, I think that will fix it. And if you go across the pieces below the neckline, then you won't have to deal with changing your um, your actual neckline shape. Or playing with the shoulders, for that matter. All right, so see, basically what I did here is I shortened my um, underarm seam to an inch and a half. I came in a quarter inch to make it a little bit snugger fitting. And I made a curved shape um, instead of a straight, a straightish shape. This, this shape is already curved a little bit. I exaggerated it more to make like a real little cap sleeve. So if you'd like to make the cap sleeve the way I showed, you can make this adjustment to your sleeve pattern piece. Or you can also make a lined, I've lined the short sleeve as is as well. So if you want a little bit more coverage over your shoulder, you can just leave the piece as is, like this, and cut out two for each side. So I cut out one for the outside and one for the lining. Okay, so I ended up with four sleeve pieces to start. Okay, so either you can either leave it like this, or you can create a snugger fitting um, cap sleeve like that. So let me know if you have any questions about adjusting your sleeve to make a you know, a more snug cap sleeve that really, it's really just like a shoulder cover. It's not like a full-blown short sleeve. All right, so that's what I did for the sleeve. All right, and so here are my pieces. And what I did after I cut my pieces together, um, I mean, I'm sorry, after I cut the pieces out, I'm just going to, or, or lay the pieces so you can see what I did, I trimmed a quarter inch off of the lining piece so it will roll to the inside. That's exactly what I did with the facing last week. Remember when I finished the neckline facing and I trimmed the inside of the facing that little quarter inch across the bottom edge? Same thing with the sleeve here. I trimmed about a quarter inch across the, the bottom edge here so when I sew it and sew it on the right side of the sleeve will just turn slightly into the inside so you won't see the seam between the lining or the facing and the outside of the sleeve okay and this is an example of like real deal like how i would do it i would use the same fabric for both pieces last week i used a separate piece for the lining so you could see what i was doing so um, but this time i'm going to use the same fabric so the first step is you cut out two for each sleeve, you trim off a quarter inch off the bottom edge of the lining piece. So make sure you have a left and a right. Like I stacked them as you know a left and right sleeve to make sure I trimmed the right 
piece on each sleeve. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to pin them together so those edges match. And it's going to make it look like your cap is now, you know, what's off. But when we go to sew the cap to the armhole, we're going to bring this up and we're going to draw it up like that. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Hi, Ian. Welcome. It's okay. Um, go back and watch the beginning. I modeled my um, top that I'm working on today. And actually, maybe after I put this other second sleeve on and finish it, I'll model it again. But basically, I created a, a tea dress from the tea, and we're working on a small cap sleeve. And here's what it looks like cut out. So welcome. And really, you're fine. You're right on time. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to drag my serger over here. And let me get a little bit better view. Sorry about that. Just want to get it so it's lightened up here. Okay. All right. I think that'll be a better view to see what we're doing. All right. So the first step is really easy. We're just going to sew along that bottom edge of the um, sleeve. And I need to plug this in. All right, so let me see here. I'm going to have to plug this in, and I'm going to have to plug this in. I did some arranging with my plugs because I needed my power strip to go outside when it was too hot to work up here. Let me just plug this back in over here. about that all right so let me show you the first step in sewing the sleeve like I said we're just going to take the lining hi Lois you're running late also but we'll catch up at the beginning I really like the cap sleeve oh thank you and thank you for joining me or us I should say all right so what I'm going to do here is I am going to sew along that bottom edge and I'm just using my four thread, um, my four thread stretch stitch here. I tested it for differential feed, you know, because I was working on the dress all morning. So I'm just going to sew right along the edge. You know, I'm just going to match up those edges as I go. show you this okay so here's what the sleeve looks like now okay we sewed you know the the bottom edge so now what I'm going to do is I am going to put my side seams together or my underarm seams together and basically we're going to sew the lining and the outside or the facing and the outside of this all together now and because we're going to fold it up onto itself wrong sides together it really doesn't matter if the seams are going in the same direction or not because once we fold it up they will be so i'm just going to have them both facing the same way here i'm just going to put one clip here okay and i'm going to drag my serger back and i'm just going to serge that underarm seam I'm going to make
make sure my tails are out so I can cut them as I go by. Now when I get to the seam, I'm going to lift my presser foot and let the fabric relax so it's, you know, so it doesn't do something funny as I go over this bulky seam. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, let me just make it a little bit bigger, I am going to use my wonder clips to clip the sleeve into position. We're going to pretend this is one layer now. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, Suzanne says, like your videos. Thank you, Suzanne. I really, really appreciate it. It would be very sad for me if I came on live and no one was watching. So I just want you to know I really appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. Um, this makes it Fridays are such fun days for me. All right, so I'm going to make sure this underarm seam is going in the same direction and I'm going to fold it in half because I want it to be as bulk free as possible. It is going to be a little bit bulky here but it worked okay because I already tested it. So I'm going to just pin those edges together and actually I think I'm going to clip all these big tails now because they just make a mess. So I'm going to just pin this And then I'm going to keep going around the edge here because we want to treat the sleeve now as if it's a single layer. So I'm just going to work my way around and I'm just going to clip all the edges together evenly. And remember what that's going to do is it's going to pull the lining to um, the inside a little bit because it's that slight bit shorter. So I'm just going to take my time and get these edges to match. And the cool thing about this pattern is the sleeve really fits one to one. So it's a really easy sleeve to put in. So having double layered sleeve here isn't going to really add that much difficulty to the whole, the whole thing here. So let me just show you. Okay, so see we've got the sleeve all pinned evenly. Oops, let me just show you. So all the edges are pinned evenly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my dress over here. And I'm going to... I'm going to turn the, the dress itself inside out so the armhole is like this. Okay, so you can see my armhole here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sleeve and the first place I'm going to pin it is at that underarm seam. Okay, so I'm going to put right sides together and I'm going to match the underarm seam with the underarm seam. Like that. And this is where they can be offset. So like I can have one seam going this way and one seam going the other way. That'll reduce a little bit of the bulk here. Alright, so I'm just going to pin that one. Then I'm just going to work my way around and everywhere that I put a pin to hold the two layers of the sleeve together, I'm just going to use it to pin it to its armhole here. So basically I'm just going to work around and pin all three layers together. And I'm going to work a little bit from going up towards the front. Okay, so I did that part of the front armhole. Now I'm going to start working this way in the back. Um, there really is, it really fits almost one to one, but I want to make sure the underarm portion matches exactly one to one. And then if I have to you know, ease it in a little bit up at the top, that'll be okay. Because that's where the ease should be, not under the arm. So again, I'm just going to follow along here. Now if you did mark your notches, because there are notches on the pattern for the armhole and the sleeve, you can match those. 
but because the sleeve and armhole almost fit perfectly, I generally skip that step, which is probably bad for a sewing teacher, but um, let's see. Um, okay, Su Suzanne is asking me which pattern I'm using. This is part of the T sew along. So I have links to the pattern in the description below. I have a women's size and Mrs. Sizes. Um, so it's been, it's a, this is the third part of the sew along. So if you're just joining us, Suzanne, go back and watch part one and part two because I show some fitting things. And last week I showed how to finish the neckline and um, armhole with a facing. Actually, that's the tee I should have put on today. I'm sorry, I didn't think of that. I love that tee and I actually wore it in the pool as a bathing suit top because it's my own backyard um all right so let me just okay let me see here sally says i so appreciate you jen your classes and live videos have been really nice part of keeping me socializing and learning during the last year or so oh so, sally i am so happy that you feel that way it was so nice to meet you and i kind of feel the same way about you joining me um and andrea says i'm late but i watched what i missed all right, yay. All right, so we're pinning, pinning, pinning. Now, when I get to the shoulder seam, I do wanna make sure that shoulder seam is facing the back. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin that. And then I'm just gonna keep going and I'm just gonna finish pinning. Now, this is one place where the, the stitching can get in trouble. See how close the seam between the side and center front piece is really close to the armhole. So you want to make sure that's laying flat when you sew the armhole. I'll show you when we get to it. Um, all right, so now I think I've pinned all the way around. And you can see it just, it fits. Like I didn't have to really ease it anywhere. Um, everything is matching up nicely. So we're ready to sew this armhole in. So I'm gonna go back to the serger. And let me bring this right back over here. It's that sharp. Let me make sure that's pretty sharp. Here, let me. I can tell if it's sharp. Hold on. Oh, that looks pretty sharp. All right. So what I'm going to do is. I am going to put my sleeve or my armhole in underneath the presser foot so I can sew inside the circle. And I'm going to start, um, I am going to start, let's see, actually now that I have it pinned on this side, I want to be able to see the wrong side of the actual dress. so. I know I just turned this inside out. I'm gonna turn it right side out now. So I'm just gonna take the whole thing, grab it through, so the dress is now right side out, and that way I can see the inside of, um, I wanna see the inside of the dress because I wanna be able to see the seams. So I'm gonna start right here at the underarm seam. So I'm, I think I'm gonna back this clip up a little bit to make room for my presser foot to fit in between these clips. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna lift that up and get that so it's laying nice and flat. And I'm gonna make sure all of my fabric is over here on the side. I don't want it hanging off the table. I don't want anything pulling at it. I'm gonna make sure I've got nothing extra under there. And what I'm gonna do is I just want to make sure all three layers are laying nicely. Now I can tell you, if you're working with a knit that curls, this is a pain because you've got three different layers here. And if it's going to curl, it's a little bit harder to deal with. So um, keep that in mind. Okay, so we're just going to oops, work our way around the armhole here. 
and I'm trying not to cut anything. I'm just skimming the layers as I go. Okay, and this is why I want it to be on this side of the garment because now I can see my shoulder seam and I can make sure everything's gonna lay nice as I sew through this area. And I wanna make sure that stays down, so I'm gonna just poke it. As I get close to the needle, I'm just gonna check and make sure it's still facing the right direction. I could have put a piece of Wonder Tape there. All right. And now I'm just gonna keep stitching. And again, you wanna make sure you're not catching anything underneath. Okay, so I'm going to cut my tail for my start point, and I'm going to put my knife down. I'm just going to overlap my stitching, and now I'm going to push everything off and chain off. Alright, so let's see what we have. Ooh, it's starting to thunder here. Hopefully nothing will happen to our stream. It's really a yucky day here in Connecticut. I hope you guys have better weather where you are. It's a rainy, murky day. All right, so let's look at this sleeve I just sewed. Okay. You know, I think it came out nice. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll model it for you at the end so you can really see. But basically, that's how you make a lined cap sleeve and sew it on. Um, now what I want to do here is my neckline is teeny tiny and so if you if you over um, guess how much you want to raise your neckline and then realize you have to shorten it let me just show you a down and dirty way to do that in your actual garment um, I'm gonna fold my neckline in half okay so basically what I'm doing is um, I am joining my shoulder seams together are right here. And I think what I'm going to do, just to keep them from sliding around, is I'm going to pin them with a wonder clip. So I'm clipping my shoulder seams together right here. Okay, that way I know that's not going to move. Okay, and then you can see this is my front neckline right here. So I think I need to take off about the same amount that I added. If you remember, this is the center front pattern piece. I added an inch. So now I'm going to take, basically I'm going to take it back off. But I do like having it close to the base of my neck, so I'm not going to take it off near the shoulder. I'm going to use my um, my little choco, choco lear here, and I'm just going to use my ruler and I'm just gonna mark off, maybe three quarters I'll take off. I'm gonna make a perpendicular line. That's really important if you want it to look like a scoop across your center front. You want it to be perpendicular to the fold at center front when you cut it. Or maybe I'll open it up, we'll see. And then I'm just gonna gently bring that back to the original shoulder seam because, like I said, I like having it close to my neck on the sides. It's just too low at the front. So maybe I'll take off a quarter. So you can see what I did here is I went like that. I drew that curved line. And I'm just going to be brave and cut through both layers here. And then I'm going to organize my back neckline because since I am trimming just that little quarter off of the shoulder seam here. So you can see that I'm cutting this. Let me cut these. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is 
I folded my back neckline. This is my back neckline right here. I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to scoop it out so it matches. All right. Now let's open it up and make sure that's okay. Let's look at it. Okay, so I think that shape is going to be nice and I've given myself just that little bit more room so I can add a little, um, I'm going to add a little knit strip there. Oh, Laura says it's beautiful here in Indianapolis. Oh, good, Laura. Thank you for joining us. Hi, um, Linda Lee. Welcome from, from Los Altos, California. I hope it's nice there. Um, all right, so now we've prepped our neckline to finish, um, so we can finish that. And I think what I'm going to do here is, before I put my final stamp of approval here, I'm just going to look at my neckline in the back, and I think I'm going to scoop that down like an eighth of an inch. Okay, just to make it a little bit more curved. Okay. Hi, Music Boss. Welcome. All right, so now I'm happy with this neckline. The next step to finishing the neckline is to create a knit strip. So I need to get my um, extra piece of fabric. Hold on. So I was really concerned when I was cutting out my big long dress pieces that I didn't mistake like uh, one of my scraps for, you know, one of my pieces I cut out. So I put the extra pretty far away. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, let me just show you here. I'm going to lay this like this so you can see. All right, this is my salvage edge right here. And I have on my cutting board, I have a 45 degree angle line. Okay, so to get a quick bias cut on this fabric, I am going to line up my salvage with a line on my cutting board. Okay, so I can also see this right here and right here is a 45 degree line. So I'm just going to get my ruler and I'm going to line the ruler up with my 45 degree guideline here. Okay. And I'm just going to cut it. And then I'm going to make a two inch, maybe an inch and, inch and three quarters strip of fabric. I'm going to cut that. Okay, so there's my strip that I need to finish my neckline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that method that I showed. I must have showed it to you guys at some point, how to measure your knit strip to determine how long to make it to finish your neckline. So let me just zoom in here so you can see this. So, oh, let me see. Uh, music box says, oh, it's 70 in Los Altos. That's nice. Uh, music boss says, at some point in one of your future videos, could you also explain fold over elastic? Mine is always wavy. Oh, yes, fold over elastic is cool. That could definitely be an upcoming topic. Thank you for um, asking about that. Um, oh, <laughs> Casey, oh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Casey, um, she says, hi, Jen, not appropriate video to make a comment, but I'm so excited you got an embroidery machine, can't wait to see what you do with it. Oh, hi, Kathy. <laughs> I'm super excited about my embroidery machine, it never goes away, it's back there, see it? I love it. I am working on something super fun. Um, 
it's poppy themed, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm saying that Sundays are going to be embroidery Sundays, but because of the time it takes for me to create an embroidery project, I may not be doing Sunday videos every week, but I will try to do them as frequently as possible. But every time I do do one, it'll be something exciting and new, I promise. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it together for this Sunday. We'll see. But I'm working on um, a new poppy embroidery. I posted it on my Instagram. All right, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and just to keep the contrast so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to fold it wrong side face out. And that's just so you can see the fact that it's folded in half, and you can tell the difference between the neckline and the strip. So I'm just going to cut the end straight like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk the raw edges of the strip around the neckline. Now here's the thing, I don't need to stretch this really hard because it's close to my neck and it fits, it's not gaping away. Something that's more open like this needs a shorter strip compared to the actual length of the neckline to draw it in. For something that's really close around your neck already, you want that strip to be a little bit shorter but it does not need to be, you know, as, there doesn't need to be as big of a difference. So I'm just going to add my seam allowance right there. So I've added a little seam allowance. And I'm just going to stretch it gently around the neckline. And basically, I just want it to pull in a little bit, but I don't want to choke myself either. So when I get to the opposite shoulder here, so my shoulder seam is right here. I'm then going to flip my neckline over so I can walk it... I want to be able to walk it right across my back neckline as well. So again, I'm just going to gently stretch it along the edge. I'm not stretching the neckline, I'm stretching the knit strip just a little bit. Okay, so we have... Okay, so I think right here is going to be where I'm going to cut it, but what I want to do is show you, so I'm just going to put a clip at the point where I'm, I would cut it to mark it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually measure this neckline, and then we're going to compare the difference. So if you have a, a clear grid ruler like this, you can actually take the clear grid ruler and you can curve it so it matches the shape of the neckline. So my front neckline measures nine and three quarters, and my back neckline, let me see if I can just get to it from here. I'm just gonna do it like this. So nine and three quarters plus, oh, that's interesting. It's probably the same. I think my front and back neckline, let me walk it this way to see. Yeah, because this is so close, look at that. My front and back neckline are exactly the same. So they're both nine and three quarters, which means, well, I don't know what that means, but let me just measure what the, the length of my strip is now. So where I intended to cut it, that measures, let's see. So I'm not stretching it, I'm just measuring it. That measures 17, 17 inches. So just because my brain is tired today, I'm just going to do math on my, so nine and times two. So it's 19 and a half. So my strip is going to be, um, Seven, uh, 18 inches, so it's an inch and a half smaller than my neckline. So for a crew neck or a close-fitting neckline, your knit strip only needs to be, you know, an inch, an inch and a half smaller, okay? Whereas if I did a wider opening like this, I might have a 
you know, a two inch difference or a two and a half or three inch difference, depending on the stretchiness of my fabric and how big my opening is. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to cut it. And I'll just use my rotary cutter here. All right, so now we're ready to sew this into a circle. And if you're doing this at home and you don't have to keep dragging equipment around, um, definitely sew this into a circle on your sewing machine. It's much less bulky. But because I'm on camera with you guys and my sewing machine is way over there, I'm just going to serge it together into a circle. But just know that doing it on the sewing machine makes it a little bit less bulky. So I'm going to fold this in half like this and I'm going to serge my short ends together you know or like I said you could do it on your sewing machine So my ends are together. Now here's the cool thing. I like to put my seam in my band, even with my shoulder seam. And because this neckline is even, I don't have, I don't have to walk the neckline to find out where the halfway point is between the shoulder and the neck, you know, where the shoulder seam and the neckline is. So this is going to be really easy. I'm going to take this knit strip. I'm going to fold it in half. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Wonder Clips to hold it, fold it in half. So there's the center, here's the, where the seam is. Then I'm going to put a second one halfway across. So again, I'm just going to fold that together. Oops, one minute. All right, so I'm folding together. And the halfway point is right here where my thumb is. So I'm going to put a wonder clip there. All right, and then I'm going to get my neckline here. And I think I'm going to turn my dress back inside out. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to pin the side that has the seam right here, I'm going to pin it so it's even with the shoulder seam. Like this, right sides together. And I like to have my dress or the neckline itself face down against the feed dog that'll help feed in the extra fabric. And then I'm going to pin the halfway point to my other shoulder because we tested it and the front and back neckline are the same length. Oh, Mary says she always sews her bands into a circle on the serger. Yeah, it's not wrong. I just know that on a on you know, on the occasions when I'm sewing and I'm not on camera, I can set up my sewing machine and serger so I can just switch back and forth between them and it just I it makes the makes it a little less bulky. All right, now see, I twisted my band, so that's one thing you need to be careful about. I mean, you'll notice it really quick, but make sure when you, oh, okay, so that's because this side needs to be facing this way. All right, so I totally screwed that up. Let me just do that again, I'm sorry. There's my seam. All right, here's my seam, and here's my My opposite. I'm going to pin my opposite one first. Okay. All right, and then I'll pin this side onto this side. Now, if you're working with a knit that it curls, try to stretch it as little as possible. The more you stretch a knit, the more likely it is for those edges to start curling or curl worse. So definitely be gentle on knits that have the curl factor. 
Um, again, another reason why I like ITY knits is because they really don't curl that much, the edges. All right, so I've got my band in there, and I think you can see I'm just going to pin in the center. And this is really easy to work with because my strip is only just a little bit more than an inch shorter than my neckline, so it's going to ease in really easily. Together here and then we're going to go to the serger and serge this on and then after I serge this on I'll model it again for you so you can see the cap sleeve and then I think what I'll do is I'll do a um, I think I'll show you how to use a twin needle on the sewing machine to do a hem because not everybody has a serger with a cover hem feature so I'm going to show how to use your twin needle on your sewing machine to create a really easy hem but I'm not going to do it on my dress I'm just going to do it on a sample because I don't want to hem my dress <laughs> all right so you can see here I've got my neckline all nice and pinned I'm going to bring my serger back And I'm going to just start somewhere near my shoulder seam. You know, and on the first shoulder seam, it's going to be in agreement with the way I'm stitching, meaning the seam allowance is going to be facing towards the back. I don't have to worry about it. But I am going to put a piece of Wonder Tape on the other side. So let me show you that. Let me just get this positioned nice and neat underneath my presser foot. Okay, so now the other thing I'm gonna do here is I, my ovation has a 3 8 inch seam allowance when my cutting width is at seven. I'm gonna bring my cutting width down so it's a little bit narrower because I wanna have some knit left to turn to the right side. The strip isn't really that wide so I'm going to try to use a quarter inch seam allowance by reducing my cutting width. And before I can start sewing, I'm going to get a piece of Wonder Tape. I'm going to just cut it with my yucky scissors. And I'm going to use this Wonder Tape to hold the opposite shoulder. So on this shoulder, we're going to be surging towards it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this clip out moment for just a second. I'm going to put a piece of Wonder Tape on the wrong side of the seam allowance. I'm going to peel the paper away and then I'm going to stick it down so it's going to stay going in the right direction. Okay. So let me just clip that back up here. All right, so now we're ready to start surging. So I am going to start surging. And I'm just gently stretching the neckline to match the knit strip. And really, it's a very little bit. And I'm making sure all my edges are matching. coming to the opposite shoulder seam, but I don't have to worry about that seam allowance flipping because I wonder taped it down. Okay. Oh, those are my doggies, sorry. So we're coming 
going to the start point. And again, I'm just going to cut my tail off. Um, then I'm going to put my knife down and I'm going to just overlap my start point, lift it off and chain off. All right, this is super exciting. Let's see how it looks on the table here. Um, all right. Margaret says, oh, my serger stays on M setting for width. I love the quarter inch. Um, yes, there's a little M on the uh, dial that's, um, it gives you a quarter inch. Margaret says, I've never realized one could reduce the cutting width on the Baby Lock Triumph. A big learning tip for me, thanks. Um, Margaret, just so you're aware, I have a whole series of Baby Lock Ovation Serger manual videos in a playlist on my channel, and almost all of them will apply to the Triumph, so maybe check that out, because there's a lot of tips um, for that specific serger on there. Oh, all right, so look at, I am loving this. That looks nice. So I think what I'm going to do since, oops, wait a minute. Oh, I missed some. Hold on. All right, so right here, let me zoom in so you can see. Um, oh, Mar Mary's dogs here, my dogs. My dogs are a little bit nutso today because it was raining when I got up this morning and I didn't hike, so they're kind of feeling like they need to get out. All right, so see what happened right here? I felt this part of the fabric is in a hole. So let me show you how I would fix this. First thing I'm gonna do is, on this side, I'm gonna cut through all of the, the um, thread to create a break in the, in, the stit, in the seam. So basically I'm isolating the part I need to take out all right, so I cut through all the, the, the thread there. Then I'm going to cut through all the thread over here. So the loopers and needles. I'm cutting through everything with my seam ripper. Because when I start pooling, I don't want to... Um, obviously, I want to leave the rest of the seam intact. And I think I'm doing it. Black on black is a little hard here. But I'm cutting all of this off to separate it. All right, so it looks like I have a clean break. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tease out these threads. And basically, I wanna get it so I can see. I'm gonna use my little tweezers here. I'm gonna just pick at the threads because what I wanna get to is the situation where I could find the needle threads. So if I tease it out on one side, I'll end up with four threads, two needle threads and two loopers. Let's just take a second. Now the short ones are going to be the needle threads and the long ones are going to be the looper threads. You do not want to pull the looper threads. It will tighten the stitch down. You want to pull the needle threads. So I think everything I can see on this side is a looper. So I'm going to turn it around to the black side that's really hard to see, sorry. And I'm gonna find those needle threads. Oh, this one's not cut yet. Okay, so if I pull at a needle thread, watch what happens. It just slides right out. But like I said, you have to make sure you've clipped them on the opposite end or it'll keep pulling them through the area you want to take out. So let me just make sure here. Oh, I think I still have it right here. Okay, so I think now if I pull this thread, this needle thread, watch what happens. It comes right out, see? 
And then all I have to do is find the other needle thread and the whole thing will fall apart. Let's see, is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. All right, I just gotta find that other needle thread. That's a looper. Okay, so watch what happens. If you find the needle thread and pull it, then all the looper threads just pull right out. Okay, and so that way, all I've done is isolated the part that wasn't caught. Okay, so now I can just stick a pin right in the middle of that area and fix it. Okay, so see how I just took out from here to here? Um, Margaret says, I will check those out on the ovation. Thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, let's see. Okay, so let me just fix, oops. Let me just fix that one area I boo-booed. So I'm gonna start by putting my neckline back in so I can overlap in front of it. Then I'm gonna start surging. And then I'm gonna just overlap my start point. I'm gonna put my knife down. All right, so I think I'm all fixed now. Okay, let's see what this looks like here. Okay, so you can see where I overlapped right here and right here. Um, that looks nicer than just veering on and off the seam. That's why I like to stop and push the thread back. So now this is nicely fixed. And I think what I'm going to do is try this on for you guys because I'm not going to um, hem this. I'm going to hem a scrap. So let me just put this on so you can see how the two cap sleeves look. I'll be right back. just make it um, me big so you can see. Ta-da! Okay. All right, so there is my finished top. I really, really like this little cap sleeve. Um, I think it's just a nice amount of coverage for something when I don't want to have a sleeveless top. So I'm in love with this. Very happy. I love my neckline. Nice and close. And then, for those of you who missed the um, beginning, I'll just show you. I made this into a dress, and I will show you how I lengthen my pattern so you can see how to do that. So there's the dress, and the top of the hem just brushes against the top of my feet, so that's why I really don't want to hem it. So let me, before I show you how to do a hem, let me just show you, um, I'm going to switch back to my view here. Um, Mary says needle threads really show more on one side than the other. Very nice. The needle threads really show more on one side than the other. I don't know what that means, Mary. Um, all right, let me just show you this. Okay, I just want to show you how I lengthened this into a dress pattern. Whoa, let me make that a little less bright. Okay, so what I did was, um, oh, Andrea likes the cap sleeves. Thank you, Andrea. Um, all right, so let me show you. Here are my original pieces, my front and my back, right? So what I did was I cut a piece of paper that was 15 inches wide. The reason why I made it 15 inches wide is 
I wanted to be able to get both pieces across folded knit fabric and if it's more than 30 inches across you know when it's folded it's not going to um, fit on your fabric so and plus I also like the proportion of the ease at my hem that's 60 inches around is I think very flattering because it fits and then right below my butt it starts to you know it's got ease here so nothing's clinging on to me um, so what I did was in the front oh and of course look at how brilliant I am I didn't mark which one was my front and which one was my back okay so what I'll have to do is I'll just have to match it up my hem so basically what I did was oh I can tell this one is my back we'll start with the back so I took the paper and I laid it down and then I lined up my center front with the edge of the paper here. Okay, and I actually used wonder clips to hold it. So I clipped extra paper to my pattern piece like this. Okay, so you can see that. And what I did was I drew a horizontal line from the hem at the side seam across to the center back. Okay, horizontal, perpendicular to the grain line. Okay, then what I did was I decided how long, much longer I wanted to make the, you know, make the dress. And for me, it was going to be um, 35 inches from this line. So what I did was I measured 35 inches down to the bottom of my pattern and then I took my long ruler and really if you have one of these rulers creating a maxi length makes it really easy because all I had to do was, let me show you this part over here, down at the bottom all I had to do was line it up with the 15 inch mark. And then you can see up here, I, let me get it so you can see, hold on, wait here, we'll look we'll at the top here. So as I was coming up, right, so as I was coming up to the top, like this, and this is what I'm talking about. I had to cut a little bit of that extra ease off to get a nice straight line from the hem diagonally going towards, you know, the bottom of the hem. Um, Mary says, on your serger stitching, the needle threads stand out more on one side than the other for ripping them out. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yes, well that's because, I know, I almost used a different color thread so you could see everything, but then I didn't want it to show through on my fabric. Um, but basically, you're going to be trimming a little bit off here when you create a straight line from your, you know, probably your, just below your waist, you know, through your height, your hip area, and then straight down. And then I created this pattern piece, so the next time I want to make, um, you know, make a dress, I can just tape, you know, pin this back on and cut it out again without having to make a whole new pattern piece. So I did that for the back and I also did it in the front. So the front looks like this. I mean, it's exactly the same thing. I just put my original front on. But on this one, you can see I really did cut off. Um, I just want to show you. So on the front, it really sticks out. I had to cut off quite a bit here. So I'm going to a shorter ruler. So when I got to this area on my fabric, I cut to here and I stopped. I cut it out through here and then I took the paper off and then I cut straight through here so I wouldn't be cutting this fab paper off. And that's how you get this fit and flare kind of shape. Um, also, it's flattering if your hem width is the same front and back. So I have 30 inches in the front and 30 inches in the back. Okay, so that also makes it flattering to hang nice. So that's how I made it into a dress. 
move that out of the way. All right. Now I just want to show you, I want to give you an option if you want to hem your hem. Okay, and some fabrics need to be hemmed, so I'm not poo-pooing hemming. I just, you know, like I said, if my fabric lays nice or I like the drape of it without hemming, I don't hem. But on those times when you do need to hem, I just want to show you how to use a twin needle because anybody can do it and you don't need a fancy sewing machine to do it. Let me just get a twin needle. Okay, so twin needles come in all kinds of widths and they come in all different kinds of needles as well. So it is possible to get a stretch twin needle, um, which of course I can't find one of those at the moment, so I'm just going to use a universal. But basically, a twin needle is a needle that has one shank, like a standard needle, and then it has two, you know, needles below it. So this is what a, let me get this in here so you can see. This is what a twin needle looks like, okay? It's got one shank, just like a regular needle, and then it's got, um, you know, the two needles. And this is a two millimeter width, meaning there are two millimeters between the points. So I'm just gonna take out my old needle, or my standard needle, and I'm gonna put that in. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is, you need two spools of thread. So I've got one spool already threaded. I have a bobbin. I think what I'm gonna do is just dig around in my accessory box and find a bobbin that has thread on it. I must have one here. Oh, I do, it's yellow, that'll be perfect, as you can see. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this bobbin, and I'm just gonna put it on my thread stand right here, and I'm gonna thread it as if it was, um, you know, a regular thread. I'm just gonna thread it the same way straight down, same thread path until I get to the bottom here. Now, every machine has different thread guides. My machine has an actual, it's got a hook here and then it has a slit. Just to keep them separated, I am going to thread them into different thread guides. So this one I will actually put through this hole that you actually have to thread it through just to keep them separated. Okay, and I'll just stick it in there. So then the only downside to using a twin needle is you can't use your needle threader. So if you have a needle threader, that, that's a no-go with a twin needle because they're not in the right position for your needle threader. So I'm just gonna thread each one of these needles individually. You know, so the left thread would go in the left needle and the right thread would go in the right needle. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm not a fan of using um, fusible tape to support my hems because I feel like they get stiff. Like even if it's... Um, a really light, nice one like the Sok Easy. So what I like to do is use, um, you know, a piece of pattern paper as a stabilizer. And I must have a scrap here somewhere. So I'll just cut strips of paper. And what I do is I fold my hem up. So let's pretend this is a hem. So I'm just gonna fold it up the amount. You know, and again, I'm in love with my wonder clip so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clip it at the folded edge you know however much you're turning it up okay. 
this edge that I'm working with has a slight curve to it, so I figured I'll just show you. So this is how I would, you know, fold up your hem like this. Oh, hi, Barbara. I'm so happy you found my channel. Um, please subscribe so you get notified every time I upload something new. And I am live every Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for um, FabFit Friday. This is part three of the tee sew along. I'm wearing the tee that I finished for today, which I actually made into a dress. Um, so feel free to check out parts one and two of that. All right, so now I've got my hem turned up. I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to put this paper underneath my fabric. And what that's going to do is it's going to support my fabric, but it's also completely removable. So I'm just going to get this situated under here like this, okay? And then I'm just going to start stitching, get a little brighter so you can see. Um, Oop, I have to plug in my foot control. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to use about a 3.0 stitch length for this. Now, unlike using a regular needle, a twin needle gives you built-in stretch. So I do not have to stretch this as I sew. That's one of the nice things about working with a twin needle. So I'm just going to start stitching. And, you know, as I go, I'm going to take the pins out. And my paper is getting cockeyed here, so I'm just going to pull, tear some of it off so I can keep it going. go a little bit more. If you were going in a round, I would, I didn't think of that, so I'm not going to do it, but when you get to your start point, pull the left thread to the left and the right thread to the right, and then overlap your stitching a little bit. Then you can pull all the tails to the inside and tie loose knots. So basically, I just want to show you that this, okay, so I'm just going to end here. This creates a nice stretchy seam with no fuss or muss. So let me just show you this. So if you want to do a hem, this is an easy option and you don't need a fancy serger to do it. I mean, if you do have a, a, a serger with a cover hem, that makes a nice hem as well, obviously. So from the wrong side, you can see that the, the bobbin thread is zigzagging back and forth between the needles. So I'm just going to gently pull on this. You know, and the thing is, if, you know, I can, I can also stretch the fabric a little bit. Um, you want to be gentle pulling the paper away. But also know if you throw it in the wash, if there's any little leftover threads, they'll wash out. Okay, and if you dampen the paper, it'll also tear out easier. Um, and you can also use a lighter weight paper, like a tissue paper, if you want to. But basically now, you can see that this makes a nice, oops, this makes a nice, um, let me lighten that up so you can see. Do you see that? A nice hem. I have one white thread and one black thread there. Um, but see, it's nice and stretchy. Oh got built-in stretch and it's not tunneling and it's not pulling because we use the paper so you can see it's laying nice and flat and it makes a really nice hem All right, so that's an option if you'd like to hem your hem try a twin needle okay so that's that's my little hem tutorial um, please let me know if anybody has questions about you know, working with any of the things I covered during the sew along, please let me know and I will help you. Um, next week, 
dig out your raglan sleeve tops because your raglan sleeve top patterns because next week we're going to start a raglan sleeve um, top pattern so long because when I um, put it out for a vote the raglan sleeve and the T almost came in tie the raglan sleeve won the contest on my YouTube channel and the um, the T won the Instagram um, voting so next week we're starting a raglan sleeve top so along and I'm gonna make a summer version it's gonna have a kangaroo pocket and a band at the hem it's gonna be really cool to work with so if you don't have the raglan sleeve top and you want to get it I'll put links to those patterns below this video when I get off today um, if you have a raglan sleeve pattern that you like and it's not mine it's not gonna hurt my feelings if you'd rather use that um, but anyway I hope you enjoyed the tea sew along um, I did line sleeves I showed how to finish a facing last week, so if you missed that, I finished the neckline and armhole of a sleeveless version with a facing. Um, we have a little twin needle hem thing you can do. So if there's anything I haven't covered, please let me know and I will help you with that. And um, I really enjoyed sewing this with you. Wait, what is Sally saying? I have to scooch up here. Sally says, Wow, 35 people watching today. That's so fun. Ooh, that is fun. It is very fun. I love you guys. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping that my sty in my eye settles down before I have to shoot a video that I have to edit, because I think that will drive me nuts to watch <laughs> my eyeball when I'm editing. So I'm hoping um, that will clear up. And I just want to thank all of you for hanging out with me. If anybody's interested in my teaching for July, I'm teaching four classes. If you go to my website at JSTERN Designs, you can click on the uh, sign up for my newsletter. I just launched my July newsletter this morning, so I have all the information about some of my new embroidery things and all the classes I'm teaching in July. And I hope you're enjoying your summer. Um, it definitely is summer now. You can see by my window it's pouring but my gardens love it. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will be putting something up for Fit Tip Tuesday, and I will see you next Friday for another episode of Fab Fit Friday when we start the regular sleeve top. So long. So thank you so much, and um, thank you for watching. Oh, but I will say hi to Eugenia. From Costa Rica. Well, thank you for joining us, Eugenia. Um, oh, and Lois says your dress looks fab on you. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm hoping maybe I can get my husband to take me out to dinner in my new dress. We'll see. <laughs> um, I always like to do like a little fashion show for him, so maybe, maybe we can go out to dinner. Um, all right, I hope you guys... Oh, Mary says, did you get the new liner in your pool? Yes, and as of yesterday morning, it was filled up. Let me show you a picture for anyone who cares. I didn't have a liner in my pool until very recently because um, it had a leak. So when you fill up an in-ground swimming pool, it fills up the, um, you know, the deep side first. So here, the Mary will like this. So I babysat my sister's dog for, for a week while they were in Florida. And you can see here. Here is my new liner, and my puppy dog is enjoying the fact that there's only three inches of water in the shallow end. There I am floating in the deep end, but you can see how low the water is. <laughs> so it is full now. I have to take a sample to the um, pool place so they can um, tell me what I need to put in there to keep it from turning green. But anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again very, very soon. Oh, Barbara says, do you have a suggestion for the Raglan shirt? Do you mean suggestion for fabrics? Oh, material. Um, I would try to find knit that has 25% stretch. And if you have a D plus cup size, four-way stretch is much easier to fit and to look nice than two-way stretch. Um, so I'm going to be working with, let me show you.
Okay, so I did a, um, a, I showed last week, last Friday, I showed these fabrics. These are Eileen Fisher dead stock fabrics from LA Finch Fabric. And also, I decorated my water bottle with LA Finch stickers. Um, but I'm going to be making my raglan out of these two Tencel knits. So this is a periwinkle blue. And then I have a lovely navy color. Now, people have commented that they wanted to see me in more bright colors. So I will say that this dress I have on has a pretty bright color in it. So I think I should get a gold star for that. Because normally I'm all black, gray, and navy blue. But I'm going to pair the periwinkle and the navy in my raglan sleeve top. Um, and I will put a link to the raglan sleeve patterns if people need to get that for next week. But don't stress out about doing anything because we're going to start with some pattern measurements, some fitting things, and some style changes to the sleeve because we're going to make a very short sleeve for the summer. All right, so um, I can't wait to start that. And um, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful weekend. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.